Hi everyone, my name is uh, Shobek Roy Chaudhary. I'm an engineering manager in Uber's platform engineering, and I'll be joined by my colleague, Milan Chubby, who's a senior staff engineer. Uh, together, we lead Uber's programming systems group, which is an R&D group uh, that helps Uber stay at the cutting edge of innovation. Today, we are here to talk about our profiling journey and how we are optimizing microservices at Uber scale. So let's talk about Uber scale. Many of you might have taken Uber to come here to this conference. Uh, what is mind-boggling about Uber is that Uber serves 30 million such physical trips every day. And we do it uh, across over 10,000 cities in over 70 countries. Right? And all of this is available to you on your fingertip in the Uber mobile app, but powering all of that is our Uber microservices. We have over 5,000 microservices and uh, over 11,000 commits land every week uh, to update these microservices. They are deployed over half a million times uh, every week. And uh, yeah, so let me, so behind these microservices, right, these are touching customers, but if you look under the stack, there's several libraries, systems, containers, all the way till the atom, there's a huge stack. And there are myriad soft inefficiencies in the, uh, you know, in the software in each one of these stacks, that's room for optimization, right? Uh, however, if you can't measure it, you can't optimize it. And that's where uh, profiling comes in. So at Uber, our profiling journey started with reactive profiling. Uh, then we upgraded it to proactive profiling, and now uh, we are in our continuous profiling. Um, you know. And these are the four steps, and I'll walk you through each of these steps. Um, so the first uh, profiler we introduced was an on-demand um, ad hoc profiler. We call it U-Monitor. Uh, and this is a screen that you see where an engineer can go in, they can select their service, and say, okay, give me a profile right now. And it will give you a profile. However, this is reactive, right? Uh, we want a profile when the incident is happening. So uh, the second thing, oops, uh, second thing we did was uh, added auto profiler. So here is a sample configuration, but uh, this is essentially the threshold-based profiling. You can say that whenever your CPU uh, usage goes over a certain uh, you know, percentage, 80%, for example, you want an automated CPU profile, right? Uh, so it gives you proactive profile, but you only get profiles you know, in the moment. You don't see what happened before. Uh, and that's where we wanted proactive periodic profiling. So th think of this as cron-based, right? Like, hey, you want like, continuous, uh, like periodic profiles um, you know, for your different services. So these are daily one-minute profiles that we collect and we aggregate. And this allows us to understand what's happening you know, across our fleet of microservices. However, this is again periodic, it's not continuous. And that's where continuous profiling uh, comes into play. You know, at our uh, team, we always look at like build versus buy. And when there is something that is great, uh, you know, uh, available externally that we can buy and accelerate our efforts, that's the preferred solution because we can, you know, uh, go have faster time to work. So before uh, enabling or you know, like giving Uber engineers a taste of continuous profiling, uh, like any uh, engineering org, what we did was we asked them, we did a survey, and we uh, showed they shared a spreadsheet with like, hey, how much is it, is it going to cost them for their service and uh, the potential ROI that they'll get. And what we heard back was that mostly everyone said yes. There were some maybes, but no one said no. Everybody agreed that it would help them improve their services and uh, they estimated it will help them you know, uh, between one to 10% of CPU savings, some even estimated more than 10%. 82% uh, said that it will help them better manage their incidents. And many said that they will use it actively, right? And with this excitement, we were like, yeah, we, are, we need to uh, you know, uh, deploy this. So let me walk you through some case studies of what we have learned, and you can see how we used uh, a Pyroscope or continuous profiling. So the first case study was uh, around reducing costs. <clears throat> a lot of Uber users Go as a preferred uh, backend programming language, and a lot of Go code typically suffers from memory poor memory allocation. So Pyroscope was able to pinpoint one of such uh, top allocation sites in a backend service, which was causing like 30% of uh, allocation overhead. So what we did was we optimized uh, this service uh, with an unsafe package with some guardrails. And that helped us save around 10,000 cores, which is in the order of millions of dollars saved. Right? Now, after an optimization goes in, you still need to measure performance and make sure that that optimization is doing what it is supposed to do. So let me walk you through how we did that. 
So this is, again, the Pyroscope UI. What you see here in the metric chart is before the optimization, the CPU utilization. And then you see a gap, which is when the service is getting redeployed. And after that, you see the lower uh, metric value. Right? Uh, what Pyroscope allows you to do is select a section of these uh, you know, in the metric chart. And below, you see uh, you know, flame charts like this. Right? This is a differential flame chart, which shows you and confirms that there was a 48% improvement. So this is how you go from metrics to differential flame charts, and it makes debugging super simple. Now let me present another case study. So here is uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the Grafana chart, a metric chart uh, of memory usage. And we noticed that a, one, for a specific service, the memory usage grew to more than 90%. And we had like no idea where. I don't know what you see there, but I see gibberish, right? Very hard to understand that metric chart. Uh, so once we started looking at it with Pyroscope, uh, this is what you see, right? So it's the same chart on the left and right, but on the left, you can select your baseline. On the right-hand side, you can select your uh, comparison. And below, you get like a differential flame chart, uh, as well as, uh, you know, you actually get a table which points to like the line of code that is actually responsible for it, right? Uh, next example is from an incident. So uh, this is a timeline of the incident. So we had a critical service which was crashing on boot uh, due to a, uh, out of memory. And then uh, what we did was we enabled service heap profiles. Uh, then we compared the good state versus the bad state using this uh, flame chart view as well. And we were able to pinpoint the diff or the change that was responsible for it and revert it. And we did it all in 30 minutes, time to mitigate, right? This would have taken several days of laborious investigation and remediation, and we saved our engineers from this pain. So these are some examples, and let's see what service owners at Uber are saying. So these are some of our customers within Uber, and uh, consistently they've been saying that, uh, you know, usually so there are some of these problems which can lead to outages, but Pyroscope helps them catch these sooner, and even before they become incidents. Uh, sometimes there's a slow spike, and people really uh, want to debug it. And before this, there was no way to, uh, for them to actually systematically go in and debug those issues. Right? And Pyroscope, like for one engineer, they said that it was able to identify when the issue started as well. Right? Um, so everybody loves it. And uh, another thing that we talked about was overhead. Right? So this is a large service at Uber. And first, we enabled it for 5% and then 50%. Uh, and we did not see any overhead uh, with Pyroscope. So this was a very, very critical decision for us to roll out Pyroscope. So in summary, uh, these are our learnings, right? Pyroscope uses the same default profiler that Go and Java have uh, and ensures low, low overhead. Uh, it then asynchronously sends all of these to Grafana Cloud for storage. Uh, we have rich set of tags to compare uh, profiles across different zones, deployments, and so on. And it gives us a rich differential comparison, which helps with root cause uh, identification. So we did a six-month POC of uh, uh, Pyroscope at Uber and deployed it across six tier one services. And uh, you know, did not see any visible overhead. It shows, uh, gave us a lot of uh, rooms to optimize our services and also fix chronic problems. And in 2025, we are systematically adopting it uh, across all of Uber services. Uh, with that, I will pass it on to my colleague, Milan. Thanks, Shavik. <clears throat> um, we love profiles. Uh, continuous profiling is great, but we want even more from it. And that's where Gen AI meets optimization. Developers are not just happy with profiles or root causes. They want automated solution for code so that they can relax. Um, this was the state of code optimization at Uber previously, reactive. Some problem happened, latency grew, cores went up, errors happened, an outage happened. That's when you would scramble to figure out what happened. It's tedious, it's hard to debug and find root causes of inefficiencies. And as Shavik told, there can be inefficiencies across the software stack. It's non-scalable. Individual performance experts investigate on-demand basis. We want to change it. We want to make it proactive. We want to identify problems before they happen. We want to make it automated so that automatically and correctly address code level inefficiencies. And we want to, it to be scalable so that we can democratize and allow developers of any level of expertise to perform code optimizations. 
A lot of inspiration for this work came from a code snippet that I am showing here. This code snippet is uh, JSON, uh, it is taking a string as source and it is filling up another buffer to meet that string to JSON RFC uh, uh, requirements. Apparently, it is doing things like, hey, is it a special character, I have to escape it, I have to append codes and stuff like that. What you see in this piece of code is a lot of appends and if you have written some Go code, you will see that these appends are vectors of dynamically growing size. Every time it does not fit, it will double it and throw away the old one, copy the old one to new one and as this keeps happening over and over again, there will be a lot of garbage collected. Uh, this happened in a very critical service and it was consuming a lot of CPU. If you are a developer, maybe think about it, think for a second, um, what would you do um, to optimize a code like this? ChatGPT, <laughs> uh, which we did by the way, um, but it, it's kind of inspiring. What the generative AI did was, it first scanned through the code and said, let me estimate how much bytes you need, okay? Now that I know how many bytes you exactly need, um, let's allocate that much. And then now that we have this pre-allocated buffer, let's simply populate it. I guess I might, I, although I know about this one, I might not have come up with this immediately. I might have done, hmm, let's allocate maybe two times more, maybe five times more, whatever is the maximum and still waste some memory. So this was actually an inspiration that, hey, it can do code level optimization, right? Uh, we had seen experts looking into each hotspots and it was time consuming. So Gen AI can help. Gen AI is a catalyst, it, it's not a panacea, it won't solve all your problems. It can hallucinate, it's after all a sequence predictor, right? It can easily go wrong. So we had to develop a lot of program analysis techniques behind the scenes uh, to do the code transformation and do code transformation validation and uh, build a high confidence solution so that developers are open to accepting things that uh, Gen AI is automatically generating. Um, and we had to tune um, the model to produce what we want. So we developed an end-to-end -end pipeline that goes from taking these profiles that we are continuously producing to generating high quality diffs. Um, so behind the scenes, there is complicated procedure happening. It all begins with having access to profiles. Uh, it can work from any source of profile, continuous profile, fleet part profiles, whatever we take. From there, we, we are able to extract hot functions, uh, come up with a recipe of optimization, come up with candidates, candidate patches, verify them, build them, test them, evaluate them, and then that's not sufficient. You can say, hey, I optimized this code, but the developers will ask question, does it really improve? So you need to synthesize, you need to have benchmarks. We may not have benchmarks, you have to synthesize those benchmarks. That also we use generative AI to produce uh, benchmarks. And then we run those benchmarks, it has to pass a lot of quality checks. After that, we deliver them to developers. Uh, many times in the initial steps, we had experts validate them. Uh, What's the outcome? By now, more than 100 automatic diffs have landed. They fall into a whole lot of different categories, but if we use Go very frequently, a big chunk comes from memory allocation related problems, but we've been able to cover a whole spectrum of uh, categories. And our developers love it. Uh, so here is Dev25 commenting, nice change. I remember this optimization from, he's referring to something that he had seen uh, on the web. And then uh, another person says, nice to see LLM code changes improving efficiency. This is at scale in important services. So here is our uh, vision for gamifying efficiency. Our developers are deeply involved in code writing, deploying, observing them. So they ha always have access to charts like this, how their service is behaving, what's their utilization, how many instances they have, how many cores they have. So, Pyroscope will come and show flame graphs where we have hotspots. And then it will identify, we will show them what are the top places to optimize by different kinds of metrics, by CPU, by memory, by scale, is it algorithmically scaling well or not? And at their fingertips, 
they will also have get a fix which will produce automatic optimizations for them. So, what does future hold at Uber for profiling and optimization? We will have low overhead continuous profiling thanks to our collaborations with Pyroscope and Trafana. We will be watching code like hawks to and not have any inefficiencies creep in. We will have automated code optimizations. So, we will have expert level code optimization at scale available at our developers fingertips. We are trying to shift left a lot of finding uh, and having automated code, code benchmark generation, linting so that any inefficiency that we suspect is detected and fixed early. There is a lot, to go, lot of ground to cover in technology space and perception of how developers see machine generated code. Uh, we need to have rigorous translation validation when code is generated by machines which is possible through technology. Uh, we need to have reliable benchmarking to prove that automated optimizations are uh, have uh, have real impact in production. Developers usually have a very high bar when code comes from machines. Um, so, we need to uh, bridge those types of uh, perception problems, but I believe that there are also a lot of developers very open to adopting these types of technologies. Um, so, we have had an excellent journey uh, thanks to uh, our friends from uh, Grafana, Pyroscope. Uh, has been an amazing tool for us. We believe this will continue, it will continue to power us, uh, do a lot more optimization and uh, save um, cost for us in our infrastructure. Uh, 